Welcome back. As Utah State celebrates their bid to the NCAA tournament tonight, we look back to 75 years ago when another Utah team did the seemingly impossible. The University of Utah became national champions twice in one month. Craig Worth takes us back to the Utes' magical season of 1944, and it's tonight's Worth Watching. Arnie Farron and the 1944 Utes will always be one of college basketball's most amazing stories. 75 years ago, they won the NCAA championship. But we back up a bit. With the war, it was hard to even field a team. But four local boys from within 40 miles of the U showed up and they said they wanted to play. And one was Ogden freshman Arnie Farron. I've been all state every year in high school, and I really don't believe Coach Peterson knew who I was. I knocked on his door and asked him if I could try out for the team. And as you get older, as I remember, he asked me if I had my own shoes. This walk-on team couldn't even play at the university. Troops were sleeping in the field house. Arnie and the team couldn't even practice here. In fact, every game was a road game, and they still won. Arnie Farron, that kid from Ogden, had his first of four All-American years. And then came the NCAA tournament. Utah was a last-minute replacement. There was an all-night train ride. And a week later, the team that had four freshman starters and only six players that saw action, that Utah team beat powerhouse Dartmouth 42 to 40. Arnie Farron was the most valuable player of the whole tournament. The team without a field house now had a trophy, the NCAA trophy in a tournament they weren't even supposed to be part of a week earlier. But wait, this isn't the end of the story. There would be more news than this folded newspaper headline. Then the Red Cross saw a chance to really give war-torn America something to cheer about. They made a super championship game the University of Utah versus NIT champs St. John's. Newsreels around the country flash the story. Little Utah, without even a home arena, was playing in Madison Square Garden. The amazing story did not end there. Those four freshmen from Utah played their hearts out. Most had never been to the East, and now they were in New York City. At the end of the game, they were victorious. The story that would show on movie screens all over the country. Well, of course, the return to Utah was triumphant. The newspaper wrote, Hey, you thought New Year's Eve was noisy? Wait till Tuesday when the Utes arrive. And horn-honking automobiles to a hastily mustered band is scheduled to greet the young champions. Even sports announcers who have cliched nicknames for everyone couldn't come up with a name for Farron and the rest. Blitz Kids, Destiny Kids, Live Five with the Jive Drive, and the Jitterbug Kids will be taken from the station by the university in blaring convertible cars. We had a parade. Uh, we had, I think, all the fire engines in the city. Uh, we paraded downtown. They closed the school. Uh, we brought the parade up in, in the present circle. Oh no, the amazing story did not even stop here. That kid from Ogden, who had to bring his own shoes to play for the youths, well, now he was asked to help America accept a new idea of pro basketball with a team called the Lakers. Oh, they were in Minnesota then, and that's how they got the name Lakers. The team's terrific to beat the Lakers basketball supreme. There's something about that Lakers score that makes the fans want more. Yes, Pollard to George, Mike, and DeFerrin for the layup and three NBA titles. The 93-year-old's life is surrounded by a story, well, a story that's unequaled in sports, and it all started with the 1944 Utes. If you like sports, that about is about as much fun as you can have. It was uh, an exciting thing to do. It really was fun. The Utes of 75 years ago. Craigworth, ABC4 News. Great story there. Arnie Farron went on to be the athletic director for the University of Utah from 1976 to 1985 
and in 2009 he was inducted into the College Basketball Hall of Fame.